Hello everyone. Good afternoon. How's it going today? Nice to see you all. It's been a little bit of uh, extra time. I missed you guys last week too. Sorry about that. Um, there was a, a little problem with the setup of the stream, but all good. We're back today. Um, back to regular scheduling, so next week should be fine. Um, I've been really good, yeah. I've had some really fun weekends lately. Um, been enjoying very beautiful weather in Vancouver. And yeah, life is good right now. I hope the same for all of you beautiful people. Hello, Lolly Lolly and Badar and Amar and Maya and Imad and Free. So many people, Michaeli. Saeed, nice to see all of, uh, lots of regulars, maybe some new people. Um, but yeah, it's good to be back. I hope you're all doing well. Um, today, like I said two weeks ago, we are going to talk about gerunds for the next hour. So um, feel free to participate in the chat. And yeah, I'll be streaming from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Excuse me. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you find it useful. Please feel free to ask any questions that you may have that are uh, related to the lesson. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to change my screen. All right. Hi, Michaeli. I hope all is well. Okay, so like I said, we're going to talk about gerunds today. Very, very useful to review um, gerunds. Okay. If you're not familiar with gerunds, they are, um, they function like nouns in a sentence, um, but they look like present participles, okay? So verb ing is what a gerund looks like, okay? If your gerund is negative, it's going to be not, and then verb ing, okay? So in, uh, in this lesson, we're going to talk about having the gerund in, in three different positions. Um, we're going to talk about gerund as subject, gerund as object of preposition, and gerund as object of verb. Okay, so I hope you learned something today. We'll get started. Hello, Mustafa from Turkey. Welcome, welcome. Okay, here we go. First little sentence. Is it big enough? Can everyone see it? Maybe I can make it one bigger. Just a moment. That, maybe that's better. All right, here in this example, we've got a gerund as a subject, okay? Watching hockey with my friends is my favorite thing to do. So watching here, ing gerund. I like to tell my students, you can think about the gerunds like action nouns, okay? It's, it's best not to think of them as verbs, but to think of them as nouns, because that is how they function. Mm -hmm. Lolly, I hope you make it here one day. Uh, France was on my bucket list. I spent time there, as you know, and hopefully I'll go back someday. Okay, so a little review. What are gerunds? Well, like I've said, verbs that end in ing, but very important, function like nouns, okay? They are found in places in a sentence where we usually use a noun. I am Canadian, yes. Well, I am actually, well, I am Canadian, but I am also half German. My mother is from Germany, and I have two passports, so half and half. <laughs> Hello, Gertie. Nice to see you in the chat. <laughs> okay, so here we have two sentences. We can say, soccer is an enjoyable activity. Hi, Pillar. <laughs> um, where we're using a regular noun in our subject position, soccer. Or we can turn and use a, a gerund. Watching soccer is an enjoyable activity. So basically here, these two sentences are very similar. However, if someone says this to me, I am picturing people in a stadium watching a game or at home watching a game on TV. Whereas here, I'm imagining um, people actually playing the sport, okay? So you can put a variety of different gerunds in the subject position, like playing soccer, 
um, watching soccer, um, organizing soccer, coaching soccer, okay? There are many different possibilities. In this next sentence, he is thinking about sports, okay? So again, we have a preposition here and we're using a regular noun as the object of that preposition. However, I could change and make it a gerund as the object of the preposition. So I could say, he is thinking about playing sports, okay? Or he is thinking about watching sports. He is thinking about trying sports. He is thinking about mm, joining sports, okay? There are many different options there. Let's keep going. Here we have, my hobby is photography, okay? So you have a regular noun. Gerunds can also be complements of the verb to be, okay? It's very important to know that this is not present continuous. This is a gerund, okay? So here, her hobby is taking photos, okay? So we have our be verb as our main verb, and we have a gerund as a complement of that, okay? Um, let's see. Just seeing, catching up in the chat here. Uh, I, I am in BC, British Columbia, free British Columbia. Hi, Pillar. Carlos, um, not all verbs can be gerunds, no. You, you would need to sort of look for a list online to see. There are many, right? We're gonna talk about several verbs today that can be gerunds, but not every single verb can be a gerund, no. Yeah, you're right, BC, 3 p.m. here. Mm -hmm. uh, Mustafa, a method for improving vocabulary, um, really, you know, all of the usual responses to that, like reading in English, uh, reading the newspaper in English, um, just talking to people, uh, listening to English music, movies, uh, YouTube, you know, all of the regular responses and perhaps making, you know, notes in a, in a notebook with that and trying to use words in sentences as well. Yes, dual German-Canadian citizen, yeah. Okay, okay, let's see here. Um, Mm -mm. Nairana has a sentence. Could you give me an example with that clarification? Um, Said, in this, this is not a verb, this is a gerund, okay? Gerunds can be complements of the verb to be, okay? So this is a, like a noun, gerund noun. Uh, no, Pez, gerunds are not in the plural form, no. Okay, and here, her habit is annoying. I could also say her biting her nails is annoying. Okay, that's also okay. Maybe, Nayarana, that's what your question. Um, okay. All right. Well, Manuel, taking is a gerund, take is a regular verb, okay? So let's see here. We're gonna get lots of examples, don't worry. Here, like I said before, if our gerund is negative, we have to put not before. For example, she asked about not paying tax or not sleeping every night is unhealthy. And like I said, we're gonna talk about three different positions to put the gerund, okay? And we're gonna start making examples, okay? Ah, Gertie, thank you, great example, great example. All right. In that case, boring is an adjective though, just so you know, right? Present participles, I-N-G words, they can be a, a gerund, they can be an adjective, they can also be a present continuous, okay? Um, pillar, not all, okay? There's always exceptions. I don't know them all off the top of my head, but there are definitely always exceptions. 
Um, let's come up with some examples. I have some tasks for you guys, okay? So let's see here. I'm going to help you make gerunds as subjects uh, examples by asking you what makes you happy, okay? I want you to try and think of gerunds as subjects to answer the question, what makes you happy? Okay, so for example, riding my motorcycle makes me happy. Okay, I want you guys to give me some examples. It's Maya, so it's not exactly like a noun. They're not exactly the same, so they have a lot of differences, but they, they function like a noun. They are not exactly like nouns, but they do function like nouns, okay? Um, but they, they, they're not used, usually not used with articles unless you're saying like um, a sleeping bag, okay? Or a, a swimming pool, then you can use them with articles, okay? When they are used with compound nouns, okay? Um, let's see here. Free, you gotta go. I hope everything works well with the doctor. Good luck and nice to meet you. <laughs> um, let's see here. That's a good, and Mary, your example, stop eating Chinese food because they are eating dogs and cats. <laughs> Grammatically good example. Um, let's see here. Uh, I'm getting more examples. Now I'm talking about you. That is, Julia is teaching. Now I'm not uh, So Nayarana, example one, now I'm talking about you. That's good, but your, your you is just the object, a pronoun object of preposition. If that was your question, yes. The object of a preposition, it can be a noun, it can be a pronoun, it can be a gerund. You, your first, this is your present continuous verb. I am talking, okay? Julia is teaching, that's present continuous, okay? And teaching is very important. Teaching is a gerund in that sentence, okay? Okay, so, Saeed, good, you have swimming makes me happy. Good, let's see more examples. Evan, sleeping a lot makes me happy. Good, good. Oh, nice, Jacqueline, you're a birder. That's awesome. I have a friend who likes birding as well. Uh, observing, observing birds makes me happy. Getting lots of good examples. Learning English, Lolly, good. Learning English makes me happy. Ooh, ooh not leaning, learning. And more examples. Haha, <laughs> Mustafa, studying doesn't make you happy. Okay. Um, I'm seeing great examples here. Uh, playing guitar makes you happy, Michaeli. That's cool. Good. Acoustic or electric? What kind of guitar do you play? Uh, watching smart English videos you could say allows you to learn in a lot of English. Watching smart English videos allows you to learn a lot of English. Good. Okay, so we're done with happy. I might have missed some of your examples. Let me see here. Uh, traveling across the world makes you happy, Manuel. Nice, me too. Mustafa, asking questions to me makes you happy. Awesome, good. Singing music loudly. Yeah, don't forget you're using an adverb, so singing music loudly makes me happy. Nice, I agree with that one. What's wrong with this? No, that's okay, it's fine. Sometimes those suggestions are not right. Um, eating healthy is more expensive than not healthy food. That's right, Gertie. Eating healthy is more expensive than eating unhealthily, you could say. Yeah. Traveling to different places makes you happy. Perfect. Thank you, guys. All really great examples. Let's go to the next thing. 
We'll do maybe a little bit less on the list, but the next emotion, what makes you tired? Let's get some gerunds as subject. What makes you guys tired? Mm, what makes you tired? Working out makes me tired, for example. Any ideas? Good. Studying hard makes me tired. That's a great one. Another one? Farah, good example. Taking time to yourself makes you happy. Yeah, me too. Very important. Mm -hmm. Mustava, sitting makes you tired? Really? That's interesting. <laughs> I, I guess you're right. Yeah, if you're sitting too much, you get a little bit, we call it lethargic, lazy, tired. Um, sitting makes me tired. Good, good. Um, haha, <laughs> BB, coworkers makes you tired. So you could say being around my coworkers makes me tired. <laughs> um, let's see here. Running five kilometers makes you tired. Now you ran a, wow, yeah, that is a long run for sure. Imad, driving in crowded streets. Driving, oops, driving in crowded streets makes me tired. Good, good. Uh, waiting for a long time makes you tired, Pillar. Good. Um, Saeed, you can't see my videos after episode 12. Why is that? I'm not sure. I'm sorry, but I can ask, um, I can ask Julian about that. I'm not so sure. I'll try and get an answer for you, but um, not too sure. Sorry. <laughs> um, Jose, studying English makes you so happy. Good. Working all day long, not a long, just long. Ivan, good. Working all day long makes you tired. Ah, Badar, socializing exhausts you. Oh, <laughs> sometimes me too. Uh, so, Hamuz, you can say, having a sleepless night makes me tired. Okay, that's great. Uh, Jacqueline, ironing makes you tired. Yeah, me too. Good, Gertie. Negative Jaren. Not sleeping enough makes you tired. That's a really good to have a negative Jaren in there. Oops. Not sleeping enough makes me tired. Good. Okay. You guys are awesome. You're coming up with so many good examples, but we're going to continue here. As you can see, we do have quite a few more uh, adjectives. Sorry, I'll make it bigger. I don't think it's big enough. Here we go. That's better, huh? Okay, angry. What makes you guys angry? I'll put maybe three examples for the last ones. What makes you guys angry? All of those are good examples. Commuting every day makes you tired. Watching too much TV makes you tired. Reading at night makes you tired. Driving in heavy traffic jams makes you tired. Wasting time in the airport makes you tired. Traveling makes you tired. Those are all great uh, examples. Meeting stupid people makes you angry. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, waiting, waiting too much time. So we could say waiting for too long. Okay, waiting for too long makes me angry. Okay, two more for the list. Haha, <laughs> Lolly, good. Missing live streams with Julia makes me angry. Yeah, I'm really sorry about that last week. I, I was here. I was here. I wanted to do it. It just uh, didn't work out. Um, both, Saeed. You can say both. Okay, they're both acceptable. I'm angry with you or I'm angry at you. Both are acceptable. Good pillar, and that's our third example I'll put on the list. Not understanding an English topic makes me angry. Okay, good, thank you. Michaeli, being hungry makes you angry, good. We call that hangry. We combine the two words and we call it hangry. I can get hangry too. 
All right, good. So three examples for the next one as well. Irritated. Okay. Waiting in traffic jams sometimes makes you angry. Pez, good. So um, I'll just change yours a little bit. You would say being let down because it's other people letting you down, right? So being let down um, all the time makes me angry. That's, that's a good sentence there. Okay, we're moving on to the next feeling. Oops. The next feeling is irritated. Okay, I'm just going to bold these. What makes you guys feel irritated? That is the same as like annoyed. Okay, what, you, what makes you guys feel irritated? Oh, good one, Maya. Me too. Losing things makes, uh, sorry, one oh. Losing things make me irritated. Two more examples. Jose, good idea, but make sure you have ing. Working hard makes you tired. Amir, not finding the right solution makes you angry. Good sentence. Okay, two more examples for being irritated. What makes you guys irritated? Getting late makes me irritated. Pillar, good. We're going to change your gerund to, um, no, I'm not going to change it. Getting, but I'm going to add places late makes me irritated. Okay, and one more example. Biting someone's finger makes me irritated. Um, do you mean other people biting their fingers? I'm not sure. Or do you mean biting someone else's fingers? Ah, nani, good, uh, good expression, good, good vocabulary here. Being underestimated makes me angry. That's a good example. Yeah, no one wants to be uh, underestimated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Saeed, being bitten, good, being bitten by mosquitoes makes me irritated. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Those are great examples. Okay, and we're going to continue to the next. Okay, we might not do all of them actually looking at the time. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to actually, I'll leave those in case later on you want to add more of your own ideas, but we'll just do a few more here. Bored. What makes you guys bored? Gertie, hearing loud instead of loudly, unless you're going to say hearing people speak loudly on the bus makes me irritated. In your sentence, it's just an adjective, so no L-Y. Hearing loud conversations on the bus makes you irritated. Michaeli, forgetting things you have to do makes you irritated. Great example. So, Emmanuel, that's a good sentence, how you have it. If you want to use a gerund, you would say uh, not finding the right words in English makes me irritated. Hamuz, um, hearing broken promises makes you irritated. That's good. You guys are getting, you're having great examples. Good. So let's do three more with bored. What makes you guys bored? What makes you guys bored? For example, not, not having, not having any uh, weekend plans can sometimes make me bored. For example, Ben, good. Doing nothing makes me bored. Me too. Nubia, good. Doing the same thing maybe all, all day. Yeah, all day makes me bored. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not running all day makes me bored. Not running, not running in, not running at all in the day makes you bored maybe? Or Nayarana, using too, using too much internet makes you bored. Good. 
Lolly, listening to uninteresting people makes you bored. Good. Getting bored when you meet bored, boring people. Mm -hmm. Staying at home on the weekend makes you bored, Imad. On the weekend. Staying at home on Saturdays makes you bored, Pillar. Nice. Yeah, me too. Watching movies about vampires makes you bored. Good. Laying on the bed makes you bored. Good. Doing house chores makes you bored. Perfect. Okay. You guys are good. So, um, like I said, I will, I'll just leave these here later on. If you want to, with the document, you can add more examples. Okay. Going back to SMART, we will look at SMART's examples. They have a two, I think, two. Okay. So, skates are necessary in ice hockey. Fine. You can use skates. Or wearing skates is necessary in ice hockey. Cricket can take a long time, or playing cricket can take a long time. Okay. Hamu's unchanged routines makes you bored. Yeah, for sure. Um, you can change that to a gerund by just saying unchanging, unchanging routines. But it's actually, sorry, not a gerund in that case. It's uh, an adjective. Okay. Um, okay. Next, gerunds as objects, okay? We're talking about gerunds as objects of prepositions because remember, prepositions, most of the time, they require an object, okay? They can be nouns, they can be pronouns, and they can also be gerunds, okay? In these two examples, um, the medal is for the race, Okay, so I can see here just a regular noun or a little more descriptive. The medal is for winning the race. Okay. This book is about retirement, noun, or I can change it to the action noun. This book is about retiring. Okay. Um, okay, let's see here. I want to, oh, before we go there, let's do some more um, examples. Okay, so here I have a list. I have a list of some common combinations where we use a gerund after, okay? Um, well, M, you have to really analyze the sentence, okay? So if, if present continuous is either to describe, you know, future plans or it's to describe something that is in progress. So you need to analyze the context of the sentence. If I say, I am working out right now, clearly it's, a, it's, it's about something that's in progress, okay? Gerunds are not about things that are in progress, okay? Um, I hope that helps, okay? So I want you guys to give me some examples. These are some common words with prepositions that are commonly followed by um, gerunds, okay? So I've got a list here, and we'll try to put up some sentences. So for example, adjust to. Um, for example, it didn't take the students very long to, it uh, didn't take the students very long to adjust to being in a new class. didn't take a very long for the students to adjust to being in a new class, okay? So here we have our preposition and our gerund. Can anyone else think of an example? Gertie, I apologize for making a lot of mistakes. Good, perfect, you have the next one. I apologize for making a lot of mistakes, and that's totally fine. <laughs> Everyone makes mistakes. Good. Amir. Um, your sentence, I don't know if adjust to is the right expression here. Um, because adjust to is becoming comfortable, right? So, uh, for example, we are adjusting 
to uh, we are adjusting to having an extra dog in the house, for example. Okay. All right. So we have the first one and the second one. Apologize for. We can give another example. Uh, I apologize for taking your pizza, for example. Taking your last piece of pizza. Good. And Emmy here. Um, I'm looking forward to learning English is a great sentence. Exactly. Yeah. So, Nairana, you would say, uh, for your sentence, you would say, I'm adjusting, because it's something that's in progress for this, I'm adjusting to going to parties, okay? This is your gerund, it's, it's uh, object of the preposition here. I'm adjusting to going to parties. Mm. Michaeli, I do not like to apologizing. I do not like to apologize for not making any mistakes. Um, I'm trying to understand that sentence. It's a little bit confusing for some reason. I don't like to apologize for. Do you mean like I don't like to apologize for making mistakes because you think that making mistakes is a good thing? Maybe? Mm. Yeah, Lolly, adjusting, um, adjusting to being a, not really the same though. Accustomed to, it's like when you're used to doing something. Okay, when you're accustomed to doing something, you are used to doing it. Uh, Nubia, it, it didn't take me very long to adjust to being in my new house. Like your sentence is good, but you're not using a gerund. Pillar, it takes a little time to adjust to my new job. Um, again, you don't have a jar in there. Pr these ones are really a lot more difficult with the prepositions, but I'll change your sentence here. It's taking me a little bit of time to adjust to being uh, at my new job. Okay, so here. Okay, let's, let's, uh, Gertie, did you take up driving motorcycles? That's awesome. I love motorcycles. I just went on a big weekend trip this past weekend. Beautiful, beautiful ride um, in, in BC here. Very mountainous. All right, um, let's see. Next one. Let's go ahead and talk about approve of. Approve of. Maya, I adjusted to getting up early. Good sentence. And Gertie, if, you're, if it's over, you should say, I took up driving motorcycles. Or I want to take up driving motorcycles. Good sentence. Approve of, for example, uh, his parents don't, we can make our verb negative, approve of, and you can have a pronoun first. I don't know if Nairana, that's what you were thinking. Um, but you can have a pronoun first. His parents don't improve of him going to that uh, college, for example. Oh, okay, Michaeli, I think, uh, well, that's, that's good to say it like that. I don't like apologizing for things I haven't done. But using a gerund, yeah, I, I don't think, mm, Maybe you're right, maybe it's just not possible. It sounds a lot better to say it how you said it. I don't like apologizing for things I haven't done. But you are using a gerund here because it's a, a gerund apologizing after the verb like, okay? Darling, don't apologize, yeah. Um, okay, so let's do another example of approve of. Um, we can do question form. Do your friends approve of you having a dog in the apartment, for example? It's 
pretty common with this to have uh, our pronoun before our gerund. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. Okay, let's go on. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Hamuz, your your sentence would be a little different. Your sentence would be. Um, Scientists know the, because you're speaking generally, scientists have approved that smoking is harmful. Okay, so your, your preposition would be that. Gertie, we approve of our daughter going out with her boyfriend. Good sentence, good sentence. Okay, let's go on to the next matchup, which is ask about. Remember, your sentences can be uh, negative, like we didn't ask about. Lolly, you, I approve of studying harder. Good. And, and your, your sentence would be a little different. I approve of the idea of studying harder, for example. So you have two prepositional phrases here. Uh, Nubia, the bank approved a credit for me. So you're not going to use a gerund in that exact sentence, actually. OK. All right, guys. Um, we're going to move on to ask about. OK, I'll give you the first example. For example, they, they didn't ask about, they didn't ask about not paying tax on that purchase. Or just, I'll just leave it like that. They didn't ask about not paying tax. OK, so we have a negative gerund after our preposition about. Imad, I don't approve of him smoking. That's a good sentence, yeah. Nairana, I asked about going home. Um, no to, just home. I asked about going home. We would just say because of a sickness, because of a sickness. Lolly, don't ask about paying the bill. <laughs> nice. Yeah, good. Okay, good, good, good. Let's continue. We have to keep keep the ball rolling. It's a it's three thirty seven. So, uh, Amir, they ask about paying for the meal. Good, but you should probably use uh, past simple, asked, E-D. Believe in. What do you guys believe in? I believe in cleaning up after yourself. In a share house, for example. I believe in cleaning up after yourself in a share house. What do you guys believe in? I believe in telling the truth, for example. What do you all believe in? Using a gerund after in. You need to use a gerund. Mm, now you're in a no. In that sentence, we would say not understanding an English topic, not without understanding. However, you could say without understanding an English topic, comma, the student uh, won't improve or something like that. You can make like a dependent clause in that case. You could have gerund after without. Uh, Amir, I believe in knowing about the past. I believe in... Good, Lolly. So you're going to have a negative gerund. I believe in not being rude to your parents. Good. You believe in not being rude to your parents. So we have our... Let me just bold these. Uh, OK, 
okay, I believe in angels that will fall for you. Nice. Pillar, you believe in being honest. Good. Hamuz, I believe in doing good uh, for anyone. Okay, I believe in doing good for anyone. Sayyid, I believe in trying to be on the right track. Good, I believe in trying to stay, we could also say, on the right track. In life, maybe, we can even add. That's a good example. Ben, good example. I'll change it a little bit. I believe in being able to do anything. I'll tell you an expression actually in English. I believe in being able to do anything that you put your mind to. This is the expression. Okay. Gertie, I believe in working hard is not enough to be successful. Nice. I believe in helping people to contribute to peace. That's a good one. I believe in helping people to contribute oops, to peace. Good. Okay. Good, good, good. Lots of great examples. The next. Lolly, you believe in doing your best every day. That's awesome. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. Yeah, don't stop believing. <laughs> I have a bad voice, but that is a very popular song here for sure. Um, <laughs> love Journey. Okay, care about. What do you guys care about or what do you not care about? Okay. Good, Maya. You will get there. If you keep going, you will get there. Good. So you could say, I care about being healthy because we're focusing on using gerunds, right? Care about being healthy. Couple more. I used to care about watering plants. You don't care anymore? <laughs> Are your plants dead now? <laughs> it's hard to keep plants healthy. I know, my, a lot of my plants have died. Badar, you care about being wealthy. Well, I hope you, I hope you are wealthy for your life then. <laughs> yeah, very common thing. Many people want to be wealthy, for sure. Okay, and we'll do one more. Good, Jacqueline. That's awesome. A negative, I don't care. I don't care about making mistakes because I am learning. Awesome. I agree. You know, the, the common expression that you don't learn if you don't make mistakes. Ben, good sentence, but you don't. Your sentence is perfect. There's no problem, but you're not using a gerund. So in order to use a gerund, you should just add uh, being around. I don't care about being around toxic people. Or in, in this case, we would change care for. That means you don't, you don't care for it. You don't like it. You don't want to do it. Okay. You don't care for being around toxic people. Yeah. Lolly, yeah, you don't care about being rude to bad people. Mm -hmm. Hamuz, you care about learning the, the English language. If you're using language, you use the English language. Well said, Jacqueline, yeah. Pez, I care about improving my English, okay? Or I care about getting better at English, okay? Emad, you can say I care about helping older people, okay? Good guys, good. Um, I'm looking at the time. I think we can do maybe one one example for each and then we'll move on to the last thing, okay? So one example for each last. Um, em em toxic people just means um, 
Toxic describes people who are no good for your life, like negative people um, or people with really bad habits, um, people who don't really um, want to help themselves either kind of thing. Yeah. Decide on. What can we say for decide on? You can think about shopping maybe. Good, Farah. Good example. Just make sure you add L-Y because fluently is describing how you speak. So it's an adverb. I care about being able to speak English fluently. Decide on. Okay, I'll put on some examples. Uh, the young couple decided on buying the duplex in Vancouver, for example. Duplex is a house with two parts to it. It's a great investment because you can live in one half and you can rent the other half. <laughs> okay, get used to. I'll give you an example. Um, it is hard to decide on learning a new language. Yes, Badar, you decided on learning Chinese. Good for you. That's a big challenge. Um, Gertie, I decided on learning English uh, no matter my age. Yeah. Saeed, I decided on not on not making promises to myself that I couldn't handle it. Uh, Amir, I'm I'm getting used to getting up early okay because you're this is would be present continuous meaning it's 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 in progress it's not over yet okay and then this is your gerund Nairana the meaning of being is is like to be right to be or not to be <laughs> being is just like like <laughs> it's so hard to explain being just just being um, like we can have adjectives, being honest is important to me, being respectful is important to me, uh, being well spoken is important to me. So you can have it with an adjective or just about being in a place like being on vacation makes most people happy or uh, being healthy makes most people happy. Yeah, Shakespeare. That's like the main line that everyone knows, right? Okay, good. Okay, we got to keep going. I'm getting sidetracked. Blame for, one example for blame for. Um, the children were blamed for breaking the window. Okay, for example. I'm just going to go quickly and give you guys a couple more examples and then we can uh, we can continue with the verbs. Disapprove of is the opposite of approve of. Uh, her parents disapprove of. Same thing, you often have pronouns. Uh, her uh, traveling abroad Oops, for a year. For example, okay, and give up. They gave up going to the gym after one week, for example. Sorry, guys, I'm just going quickly so we can get to the verbs. We have about 12 minutes. Um, and finally, insist on my my grandmother insisted on paying for my dinner, for example. Insist is on, it's like, no, no, I insist. It means that you will not take no for an answer, okay? Uh, 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 uh. I'm looking at your examples now. Uh, Am I not getting used to being early at home? So you are not getting used to being home early, you would say. Lolly, I get used, I, you could say I get, 
I get more used to learning English every day. That's good. Hamuz, present simple, you would want to use present continuous. Present continuous is um, very common with get used to because usually it's a process, right? Um, but not always. You could say, I got used to working out very quickly. Michaeli, I will never get used to hearing racism or homophobia, etc. Comments, yeah. Good job, Amir. You gave up smoking a year ago. That's awesome. Uh, what do you mean, Badar? In, in, which, in which example? Present participle. Okay. All right. So let me know and I can try and answer. Back to SMART. We've got 10 minutes. Good. And we're going to talk about the last thing. The last positioning of a gerund, object of verbs. Okay, so um, if you want to have two actions side by side in a sentence, the, the first action is the verb, okay? I like to refer to it as verb one. Um, and the second action is a gerund, okay? So, for example, you can just say, I love this country. Or you can be a little more descriptive uh, about your feelings and say, I love being in this country. So love is your first verb, and being is your second, action, which is a gerund. <laughs> Gertie, thank you. They started the competition, or they started competing. Okay, this is your verb one, this is your second action. Now, you guys were asking earlier, can all verbs be gerunds? Well, there are many, many verbs that can be followed by gerunds, okay? And we're gonna, we're gonna talk about how many, um, not many, well, quite a few actually, as you can see. Look at all of these verbs in SMART, this big long list. Um, you know what, I'll just, I'm gonna copy this, and I'm gonna put it on your document, because I'm gonna share this document um, with you guys. So if I put it down here, that way you can have the full list that's on SMART in the document, okay? If you see a star, that simply means that this verb can also be followed by the infinitive, which is what we're gonna talk about next week, okay? Okay, so here, admit. Like, a, like we see here, Okay, no, that's the end of the lesson in SMART. So we're going to come up with our own examples. All of these verbs can be followed by gerunds. Okay, so let's think of some examples. Um, admit, when you say, okay, yes, I did it. The, for example, the little girl admitted not going to sleep when she was asked, for example. So negative gerund after, whoa, excuse me. <laughs> Don't know what I did there, but that's okay. Um, admit here is your verb one, so I'll underline it, okay? And negative gerund, okay? That's for admit. We'll do one example for each since we're running out of time here. Can't stand is also commonly followed by a gerund. Amir, good example. The criminal admitted doing this action. Um, ben, the young boy can't stand for himself. That, I think you maybe you mean can't stand up for himself. Um, and in which case you mean like say, hey, don't talk to me that way. Um, but if you mean physically he can't stand for himself, that's a good sentence. But again, we're not using um, a gerund. So I see an example from Gertie. I can't stand people speaking, don't forget ing, loudly adverb in the cinema. That's good. So here we have our verb one. And you can have an, ob you can have an object first. Here is our gerund. Good. Yeah. 
<laughs> nice, Amir. That's a good, good example. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoy it. That's, that makes me happy. What about miss? Can you guys think of an example with miss? Okay, we've got, we've done admit, we've done can't stand. Let's do miss. What do you, what, what's a good sentence using miss as your verb one followed by gerund ing? I'll give you an example. I miss, uh, oops, I miss, I miss being at my family cottage, for example. Okay, so here is our first verb. And as you can see, being is a really common gerund. Good, Amir, good. I miss, good job with the past tense, watching last week's class. Good. Here's your verb one. Here's your gerund. Okay, let's, let's move on to practice. Try to get some example with practice. <laughs> so Lolly, good example. However, annoying is an ing uh, adjective, participle adjective, right? Jacqueline, that's a good sentence, yeah. I miss talking with you. Good. I like to, to keep my form here, bold, underline. Good, so Ben, your sentence is good. Your verb one is like, oh, you retracted it. Your, your sentence was good. Your verb one was like, your gerund was practicing, okay. Um, I miss going to my friend's parties. Maybe, Pess, you would have I-E-S, because it's more than one party, right? Michaeli, I miss relaxing on my vacation time. Good. Gertie, good. I practice, oops, I practice cooking every day. Good. We got our gerund. We got our verb one, okay? Pillar, that's good. Your first verb is like. Your, your gerund is practicing. Okay. Um, mm, for example, she is practicing not saying yes to everything. <laughs> for example, first, present continuous. So your first verb is in the present continuous. Okay, and a negative gerund. Okay. Lolly, lolly, I am considering moving to Canada one day. Yeah, that would be like, because it's like an ongoing thought. So it would be present continuous. I am considering moving to Canada one day. Good, I'll put your example here. I am considering moving to Canada one day. Nice. You should. You can always go back if you don't like it, right? You should come. <laughs> come to BC. It's the best province. People, people not in BC won't like that comment. <laughs> okay. Um, where are we at? We've done consider. Let's continue to avoid. Okay. We're going to consider to consider. We're going to continue to avoid. Gertie. I consider practicing English with your husband. Nice. Well, you should. Any practice is good. Badar, I've considered quitting my job more than once. Okay, great grammatical sentence. That's, that's okay. It's very common. It's, it's good to consider everything. Ben, I avoid talking stranger people. So you could say, I avoid talking to strange people. Okay, just a couple changes there. Good. That's good. First verb and gerund. Okay. We avoid learning about past events. That's true. A lot of people like to just forget, right? We avoid learning about past events. 
Okay, good. Oops. Okay, we're coming up on the end. So um, there's the list of all of the verbs in SMART that are commonly used with um, gerunds. It's not a complete list, okay? But um, we can do one more, and I'll give you a couple examples. Recommend. Um, the waitress recommended ordering the uh, pad thai, for example. The waitress recommended is your verb one, and ordering is your gerund. Okay. Keep. Keep doing what you love. For example, here's your first verb, here's your gerund. Okay, and I'll just bold that. And last one, guys, I'll give you a quick example with deny. Um, maybe, uh, for example, his roommate denied locking him out. Okay. Here's your first verb, and here's the gerund. Okay. Okay. So um, it's 401, so we've come to the end of the class. Um, but next week, we're not done with gerunds. Um, for the next two weeks, we are going to be adding infinitives into the mix and also talking about when you use a gerund or an infinitive if the meaning can change okay so yeah definitely two more good useful weeks on this topic coming out um, good question Pilar locking him out means when you purposely lock the door so that somebody can't come in okay so just basically locking the door on purpose Pez, you said my, my neighborhood. So you don't want to say my neighborhood, you want to say my neighbor because it's a person, right? My neighbor denied parking my car in front of his house. Good, Nairana, the, car, the court denied taking a plea. That's awesome. Michaeli, thank you. Have a great week. Um, thank you, everyone. And again, I'm sorry about last week. Um, and it should be good from here, schedule as always. Um, thank you, Jacqueline, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, but keep, keep doing what you're doing, right? Keep studying hard, keep practicing, um, and yeah, you'll just continue improving. So thank you guys, I appreciate your positivity and good vibes, good energy, that's always good. Um, the document I will put in the chat. Okay, so I'll do that in a minute, but I'll sign off. I'll say goodbye. See you next Tuesday at 3 o'clock. Okay, peace. <laughs> Bye, guys. Have a good day.